Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, like Andrew said, um, I'm going to be talking about the work we're doing to build our safeguards in Madagascar. And safeguards, that area of the programme is all around developing the capacity and training people in country to really develop that in country capacity, which is vital for all conservation work to ensure long term sustainability of any conservation efforts. So I'm going to be focusing on Madagascar. Um, and Madagascar was the first region that we started working on through the SAFE programme um, for a couple of reasons, one of which Andrew's mentioned. It's where Dora has been working for one of the longest periods of time. We've had a great track record of successful conservation. But it's also because of the amazing and diverse frog fauna of Madagascar. So in Madagascar there's over 300 species of which all but three are found nowhere else on Earth. They're only found in that country. But like a lot of Madagascar's other iconic fauna and flora, it's highly threatened. About 45% of all those species are threatened with extinction. Madagascar itself also poses a lot of challenges for conservation, and a lot of which are exacerbated by the instability with the government that's been going on there for the last few years. So for that reason, it's really important to have a strong national community, conservation community, to really be able to help to try and meet and overcome these challenges. And in Madagascar, whilst the amphibian community is growing, it's still relatively small and fairly dispersed. That's why a lot of our work through the SAFE programme has been really trying to build and develop individuals and organisations to try and strengthen this national conservation community for amphibians. I'm going to talk about a few of those examples. Um, one of the areas we've been working with is developing the captive breeding capacity in country. As both Arturo and Mike mentioned, captive breeding can uh, be a vital part of conservation efforts, especially when species are on the brink of extinction. But it's tricky to do. Um, however, with Madagascar, we're fortunate that an excellent captive breeding centre already exists um, in a town called Andasi Bay, run by a local NGO, Association Mitsinju, which was set up around about six years ago, I think, for the conservation of this species, the critically endangered golden mantella. And it's almost entirely run by people from the local community. So it therefore serves as a really good model um, to use. And we've been working with Mitsinju um, to facilitate them to be able to use their expertise in trying to set up a second centre at Parc Evelouine over in the east of the country. And we've helped them to have training exchanges and mentorships between the two institutions, not only to share skills and knowledge, but to begin building a network of individuals involved in captive breeding in the country and really foster these kind of in-country partnerships. We've also been working with Mitsinju to develop their own capacity so that they're better able to help others and further develop their own programmes. So this is Mampi, who was one of our, our very first SAFE intern. She's one of their technicians for Mitsinju. And she came and spent a month working within our HERP department about a year ago. And during that time, she was fully embedded within the team, all the protocols and procedures that are necessary for running a successful captive breeding centre. And this proved to be really positive, as when she went back to Madagascar, she implemented a couple of new um, live food <coughs> colonies based on what she'd learnt in Durrell. But probably the most important thing she got out of it was the real boost to her self-confidence and self-belief. And this has enabled her to pass on her knowledge uh, and the ethos and working practices that she learnt over in Jersey to really make the practices at Sinju more effective. And Mampi is just one example of where working with individuals and investing in individuals can make a real difference. I think Arturo is a great example of that. Um, and another example we're working with in Madagascar is Santa. Santa is set, not the Santa who brings you presents, but Santa is sat here on the left. Um, and she used to be um, Daryl Madagascar's programme vet. 
And during that role, also became our main representative in all the amphibian work we were doing in Madagascar, especially around all the Kitchwood research that was going on there, and really became established as a key member of the amphibian community in the country. All the skills and knowledge she got learnt through this led to her earlier in the year um, being hired through the Amphibian Survival Alliance as their programme lead for Madagascar, which is really a critical position or post for the country. Uh, it's secure for the next two and a half years or so, and it really, her role is really focusing on trying to bring together individuals and organisations and build networks within the country for amphibian conservation and build this national conservation community to really help drive forward amphibian conservation there. And we're going to continuing working with her to really try and foster her leadership skills through personal and professional development and really try and help her or enable her to do this role to the best of her abilities. As well as individuals, we're also looking at working with um, NGOs and civil society groups. Um, one of which is a local NGO called Vundrana Ivuni Fampandrasuna, uh, otherwise known by its an acronym VIF, which is a lot easier to say. Um, VIF are a local NGO um, association, and they've recently been gazetted to manage one of Madagascar's new protected areas, the Ankarach Massif, which you can see here. Um, and it's a really important site in Madagascar, as it contains the largest remnant area of high altitude forests in the country. Um, it's also important at the global level, being the only place on earth that two critically endangered species of amphibian are found. Uh, one called Mantisaxilis pauliani, and this guy, Bufus williamsi, or Williams bright-eyed frog, and they're found nowhere else. However, the Ancaracha protected area is over 20,000 hectares in size and represents a real step change for VIF in terms of their responsibilities and working practices. And they're therefore going to need a lot of input and support to be able to deliver this effectively. One of the main threats to Ancaracha, as with the rest of Madagascar, um, is chopping of forest for timber, charcoal burning and zebu grazing. Uh, and within the management plan, the use of community patrols is a way that's going to be used to monitor these destructive events and um, hopefully protect against them. And this is where Durrell can really help with VIF because we've got great experience through our other projects of community patrols um, and can provide the advice and training opportunities to really help VIF manage these community patrols effectively. And this is really key because without these community patrols, and a character risk becoming like 99% of the rest of the central plateau, which is a pretty spectacular but treeless landscape, which would be bad for a character, bad for the people, and bad for the frogs. So really, what are the next steps? Building safeguards in Madagascar is a long process, um, but something that, through SAFE, Dora are committed to. We're going to continue trying to foster leadership at the national level through people like Santa. We want to continue working with local NGOs such as VIF to try and protect really important sites for amphibians and to continue identifying young keen individuals to give them the training opportunities to make a difference for amphibian conservation. As at the end of the day, um, by only giving this training and development to local people and the local organisations, is this conservation action is going to be sustainable into the long term and ultimately the beautiful and diverse frog fauna of Madagascar be safe. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>